know, I'll tell you what. Hollis better fucking eat some of these. Because if he doesn't, I'm gonna. Fucking hell. Yeah, I've done my fucking milk on. Hello, Hammerheads! Thanks for tuning in. Right, you know, I got this not long ago. And I thought, I might as well fucking review it. Now, I have to remember, the lens is there. Not there. Christy's having the same problem, it seems. She's just bought one of these tablet things. Well, I've got an iPad, she's got a tablet. Same thing, really. I think she got a Google Android. I've got a Samsung fucking Apple iPad, whatever. Oh, God. They're upside down. Right. Blu-ray. Coincidentally enough, I bought this box set in Asda on the very day, well, the night before I flew to Aragon, United States of America, yeah. You know? And I thought, you know, I was just brown. I, I went in Asda for the sole purpose of getting a fucking an adapter for when I go to America. Because I did have one, I fucking, for the life of me, I don't know where the hell it is now. I probably threw it out. Well, I've moved that many times in the last seven years. It could be fucking anywhere by now. But anyway, I went in there for that. They couldn't find one. I was looking in the, you know, the DVD part like, in, in Astor. And they, haven't, they haven't got much of a fucking choice in there. Not the one in the galleries anyway. And looking at the Blu-ray, see if anything jumped out and, like bought my eye and whatever. It's like, wow. Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry collection on Blu-ray. All five films. And um, I thought, well, yeah, it's, it's fucking what? I can't remember how much it was. It was fucking cheaper than chips, actually. It was really cheap. It was fucking, I don't know, about f 12 quid or something like that. All five films on here. I've even got the soundtrack. Like, it's got lots of parts of diff all the films in it. You know? Lalo Skifrin presents Dirty Harry Anthology. It's, it's only three films, actually. It's uh, original music from the soundtracks of Dirty Harry, Sudden Impact and Magnum Force. Because Jerry Fielding did the music to um, The Enforcer. The only Dirty Harry film where Lalo Skifrin didn't do the score. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Jerry Fielding, he also did the music to Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> I'll do a re quick review of them. I'm not going to linger. See, on the first Blu-ray box... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no! I better not have fucking broke it. Look at that. No, it's not broken, it just slots back in. Thank God. What the fuck? <sighs> Get back in there, you little... <clears throat> How the fuck is that supposed to... How am I going to fit that in there? Hold on, hold on. There, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. It's not fucking working properly. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Jesus Christ almighty. Never had the fucking VHS boxes. 
Anyway, here's the first one. Well, I won't even shut now. Look at that. No, there's something wrong with it. Anyway, fuck that. First, there's three films on here. Dirty Harry, Magnum Force, The Enforcer. The first three. Dirty Harry, you know, the director. Don Siegel directed it. Music, as usual, by Lalo Skifrin. Starring Clint Eastwood, Andy Robinson, Harry Gardino, Rennie Santani and John Vernon. And all these, you know, the characters and all these fucking Dirty Harry films, they always come from the pen of Harry Julian Fink. <laughs> I've noticed in the credits lately as well. So Dirty Harry, 1971. You know, and... Um, <sighs> Well, Harry Callahan. He's there's a sniper holding the city of San Francisco to ransom. He's gonna kill black people or gay people or whatever and you know, he's just a horrible little bastard. Andy Robinson plays him. Well he's just called Scorpio in the film. And Andy Robinson he he was in Hellraiser and fucking quite a few things under the name of Andrew Robinson. But anyway, Clint Eastwood, you know, fucking... He bounces them all around the fucking city from phone booth to phone booth. <laughs> That's... You know, I've read a Sean Hudson book when a character in that had to do that. And they've also played Grand Theft Auto 3 when there's a, a mission in that when you've got a fucking drive to from phone booth to f so influenced quite a few films this and uh, I actually got my fucking you know me hammerheads I got it from this film I don't know what made me think of it but I thought of this film when I invented this for myself and um, well for all my hammerheads I thought what shall I use that's gonna be catchy and I thought of this film, because there's one part when there's somebody crossing the road in front of him doing something daft in the road, and Clint Eastwood goes, Get out of the way, hammerhead! <laughs> <laughs> and it always just stuck in my mind, that. So I thought, Ah, hammerheads. Hmm. I thought, Man, it probably won't even catch on, but <laughs> it sort of has, I think. But anyway, Clint Eastwood gets his man. In all five Dirty Harry films, there's always a, you know, a, um, a saying by him, isn't there? You know, what he said. In, in the first one, for instance, Ah, uh -huh. I know what you're thinking. Do five, six shots or only five? I'll tell you the truth. I've lost count in all this confusion myself. you got to ask it yourself a question. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you, punk? I forgot that to say the bit about the fucking 44 Magnum. Yay. I love his Smith and Wesson he, he normally uses. His fucking 44 Smith and Wesson Magnum. Fucking brilliant. Anyway, he gets him in the end, and I love the, one of the lines in this. What is it again? Um, Earlier on in the film, and you know, he's, he's, he's you know, the mayor's come there, and he's John Vernon. No, he's not the mayor, he's um, the commissioner or somebody. I, I don't know, I can't remember. It's years since I've seen it. <laughs> and um, we don't want any more incidents like that in the Fillmore district. And Clint Eastwood says, um, before he walks out the door, he says, well, I shoot the bastard, that's my policy. And how did you devise that? Well, a naked man with a hard on is chasing a woman down an alleyway with a butcher knife. I figured they ain't out collecting for the Red Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking classic. 
But anyway, Dirty Harry, the first one, 1971, he throws his badge away at the end and, you know... Was... Right, second film. Magnum Force, 1973. I'll, in fact, I'll read the synopsis for the first one. It's not very long. Some Fran streetwise San Francisco police detective Harry Callahan will nail the serial killer Scorpio one way or another, no matter what the system prescribes. <laughs> anyway, the second film, 1973, Magnum Force which is a really good film. I mean, it's starring, um, well, directed by Ted Post. Every, all five Dirt Harry films had a different director. Directed Ted Post, as usual, music, Lalo Skiffrin. Starring Clint Eastwood, Hal Holbrook, Mitchell Ryan, David Soul, Felton Perry, Robert Ulrich and Tim Mafson. Yeah, and, um, you know, it's, it's, I'll read the synopsis on the back of here. Headlines, Clint Eastwood headlines a solid sequel pitting Detective Harry Callahan against an unexpected lawbreaker, one who carries a badge, sharpshooting rookie motorcycle cops have turned vigilante, rubbing, uh, yeah, rubbing out crooks the courts can't touch. Their real enemy is the system. Unfortunately for them, the system is what Harry is sworn to protect. Well, you know, they're basically a bunch of rookie motorcycle cops led by David Soul. You know, three of them anyway, going round fucking killing all the scumbags of San Francisco. Even fucking pimps for crying out loud. Mm. Harry Callahan says, and Hal Holbrook, Lieutenant Hal Holbrook, his boss. Well, he, Lieutenant, um, oh, what's his fucking name again? Briggs, Lieutenant Briggs, played by Hal Holbrook. He says to him once, he says, um, yeah, that's fine, but where's it going to end? You're going to end up shooting your neighbour because his dog pisses on your lawn and... He's right. I mean, you've got to draw the fucking line, but you can't when you're a vigilante. <laughs> so, anyways, you know. In the first one, Harry's partner gets wounded and shot, you know, and he ends up in a wheelchair with his Mexican partner. And in the second one, in this one, he, his partner gets blown to bits. So, he, he's fucking dead. So, that's Magnum Force. 1973, and by the way, there's an Italian psychopath in this called Frank Palancio. It's always a fucking Frank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, third one The Enforcer from 1976. Yep. <sighs> Directed by James Fargo, another director yet again. Music by J Jerry Fielding, not Lalo Skiffrin. Jerry Fielding, oh fucking hell, I'm looking over there. Fucking hell, so it's different. The other four, all bloody Lalo Skiffrin. Starring Clint Eastwood, Harry Gardino, Bradford Dillman, Tyne Daly, and Brian Blessed. Yep, and you know, I, I'll read the little synopsis on the back. Return, Clint Eastwood returns for his third Callahan caper, joined by, this time by a new partner, Tyne Daly, as Inspector Ken, Kate Moore, who has two jobs, tracking down the terrorists and winning Harry, Harry's confidence. Stoked with brisk humour, hard-hitting mayhem and high-impact team of Eastwood and Daly. Yeah, so it's not it's yeah, it's not a bad film. I mean I mean you like I was saying about the scenes in the first one it's like yeah uh, uh 
do you feel lucky, blah de blah, you know. And in the second one, I forgot to mention, it was like, he says it three times in the whole film. A man's got to know his limitations. And in this one, the Enforcer, he says this about two or three times, uh, you can count on it. <laughs> right. So, you know, this gang of fucking terrorists are holding up San Francisco and they kidnapped the mayor and demanded a massive ransom and that and Tyne Daly successfully rescues him and then gets shot just afterwards and then dies. So that's another <laughs> Harry Callahan partner bites the fucking dust. And um you know they they steal the Lars rocket. Mm. Harry's got one too. <laughs> It's his face at the end, the baddie, when he, he knows he's going to get blown to bits because he's pointing one at him. He's like... <laughs> anyway, he saves a day and he's a bit pissed off about another partner dying and getting injured or whatever. So that's 1976, the third in the instalment of the Clint Eastwood classics. The Harry franchise, the Enforcer. Now it's the end of that disc. And the last two are on here. Sudden Impact and the Deadpool. I watched the Deadpool the other night because I haven't really watched that very often, you know. I think I seen it when it was released in 1988 or whatever. And anyway. Clint, there's the fourth one from 1983, Sudden Impact. I'll read a little bit on the back. Clint Eastwood hits the mark again in Sudden Impact, which he also directs. Harry's older and dirtier, and the world doesn't hasn't gotten better, which means this fourth Dirty Harry movie is explosively exciting as Callahan tracks a traumatised rape victim, Sandra Locke, coldly gunning down her bygone attackers. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll, you know, it's fucking, it, yeah. Director James, sorry, directed by Clint Eastwood, this one, yep. Yeah. Music, Lalo Skiffrin, starring Clint Eastwood, Sandra Locke, Pat, Pat Hingle, a few other people, I'm not, I fucking hell not. Anyway, yes, yeah, Sandra Locke, I mean, I think they were married at the time, they were always in each other's fucking films, and, um, bit of divorce, apparently, they went through. Anyway, um, she's going round shooting these blokes in the bollocks, and then in the head, a bit like the serial killer in The Long Cold Winter, and, um, you know, the, the gang raped the, her and her, her little sister, Previously in the past, little sister never fucking got out of it, or she, you know, she never got over it, and fucking neither did one of the rapists. But she's gone around killing them all, and bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah. And in this film, he's saying his, um, make my day. He says that a few times. <laughs> and he's got that wonderful fucking monster of a gun in this. I don't know, I can't remember what it is. Looks like a wildy, but I don't think it's a wildy. That's what Charles Bronson has in Death Wish 3. <laughs> He's wildy. <laughs> don't worry, wildy's coming. <laughs> a small version of the game fucking hunting gun. Anyway, so that's, you know, sudden impact. Obviously, I mean, he actually goes to Philadelphia in this, I think. Yeah, so there's only a little bit of San Francisco in the beginning, and then, then it's Philadelphia. And now we've got, last but not least, the fifth and final one in the franchise, 1988, The Deadpool. Yep. Um. Oops. Oh, God, I'm going to wreck the fucking house. Nearly burnt it down last night, you know. 
Spaghetti and meatballs. Fuck it, man. Oh, God. Right. Directed by Buddy Van Horn. Music by <laughs> Lalo Skiffrin. <laughs> Starring Clint Eastwood, Patricia Clarkson, Liam Neeson, Evan C. Kim, David Hunt and James Carey. Jim Carey. The same bloke. I didn't even recognise him the other night. I knew it was in it, but I didn't think it was him. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, Liam Neeson is from, um, he's a film director and a, you know, a British film director in America. You know, he's me no, and he makes all these weird fucking horror films and, and promo videos for fucking songs or whatever. And um, you know, the serial killers on the loose. And like him and his film crew play this game called the Deadpool, and you've got like a list of celebrities on it who's who might get it next, and Harry Callahan, Harry Callahan's on it. And <laughs> anyway, teams up with the this fucking <laughs> Chinese American, and then uh, you know another partner, and he even says in in the office when he's getting like made to like have him as a partner it's like uh, this is your new partner and that having a Chinese American might be good for the the fucking forces image <laughs> Clint Eastwood says um, why don't you tell him about all my ex-partners that are all dead or in the hospital <laughs> how does he feel about that <laughs> Sure enough, his partner does end up in fucking hospital with broken. Luckily, he had a bulletproof vest on when the car blew up. <laughs> uh, so, three partners died and two, like, injured. <laughs> Bit like Death Wish, really, you know what I mean? I mean, fucking, there's five of them. And nearly all his partners and wives or girlfriends fucking die in it. They get killed in it. I mean, the first Death Wish one, she got killed. The second Death Wish one, his new wife left him because she knew he was a killer. In the third one, he meets a girl, she gets murdered. In the fourth one, his wife gets shot to death. In the fifth one, his new wife gets fucking killed. <laughs> it's the same with his fucking police partners. But the Deadpool, it's not bad. There's a couple of pointless... Cameos by Guns N' Roses, you know what I mean? I, what the fuck? Why? Uh, you know, there's a Guns N' Roses, couple of Guns N' Roses song, songs in the film. and Well, if you want my opinion on all five of them, I mean, which is my favourite, I do like them all, but I'd say the very first one's the best one. Definitely, Dirty Harry, 1971, because it was different at the time. It was like, you know, there wasn't any cop fucking thrillers like that, blowing people away and stuff and shit like that. <laughs> so, Dirty Harry, yeah, 1971, brilliant, all of them. Great fucking films they are. <laughs> See you later, hammerheads. Oi, mate! I'm trying to get some fucking sleep, you bastard!